Okay, how many people in this room own a house? Wow, what? Liz, you own a house? Come on. <laughs> how, many people, how many people in this room own a house? Okay, not bad. A much higher percentage than I get with my undergrad students. Um, how many people think that a crew of four could build two houses in the approximate time of a week to the point of where they're just waiting for finishing? Okay, good. Jack, no, no, I, I, no. there's a there's a guy with there's a guy with an open mind. Framing. Prefabricated like mini houses that are. Uh, I don't know what the name for them is, but they're like they're really they're literally like a hundred square feet or hundred and fifty square feet. Yeah. Good. Okay. It's <laughs> it, it's built around it's built around the same the same idea, but uh, it. They're a lot bigger than that. So there are, there are companies that exist now that have innovated building design to the point where they can frame and construct a house all the way to, ins all the, way to the, the stage of insulating it in a matter of four days. So of course, this costs more money. And the article that we were to read this week dealt with the should self versus the want self. So and the idea behind that, that phrasing is that we know we should be more sustainable and we should make the choices that are going to be better for the environment and better for our kids and the future generations that are going to have to deal with what we've done. But when it, when it comes time to make the decision, we will often just say, oh, that costs way too much money. You know what? It's, and then we just shove it aside. Like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's only a few more trees. It's, it's, it's not so bad. So the analogy here in my presentation, um, right now Avenue Exit Right is not sneakily kind of making a jab at right wingers. It's just saying that, you know, you're going to take the exit right and just get off here and spend less money if you don't want to be innovative. Or you could continue forward. So check this out ourselves a simple mission and that is to change the world of housing and change housing all over the world why simply because we've been building houses across north america the same old way for 400 years with wooden structures taking into account the challenges that our natural resources and the growing population across the world represents it's time to look at new ways of doing things. Thanks to recycled steel, galvanized steel, light steel, we can give a shape and functionality to our buildings. It allows us to do homes without any interior load-bearing walls. We can do homes with spans up to 25 feet and ceilings with different heights from one room to another. This includes large, grandiose windows that allows us to take advantage of the natural sunlight. And we then wrap this galvanized steel with polyurethane soya-based foam that basically surpasses all the North American and European insulation norms. It's all about revolutionizing the habitation industry with a new method. It's a technology that enables us to assemble a house or a dwelling just like your good old Meccano Erector toy set. All the pieces are clipped in one into the other. For a typical North American home with a surface of 4,000 square feet, for example, all we need is one single tool on the job site, a drill. It's only used to tighten the bolts and screws. Four individuals are capable of assembling within four days. Okay, that's where I'm going to go to the next one, okay? So these guys are claiming, and I've been to one of their presentations, and, and I've seen evidence that this could be true, that they can frame the house in four days. So the heading to my slide, four days my app. Um, uh, but the, the company, in case you missed it there, because I was fiddling with the volume a little bit, the company's named Bone Structure. They're a Canadian company out of Montreal. And the idea is that they're, it's not just about less waste. They're also using recycled materials to construct a home that is then more durable and, and by far um, more interchangeable, I'll tell you about that in a second, than, than a standard wooden frame house. Now, 
I swear I saw more than four guys there a couple times, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any women. <laughs> I already asked them that. I'll, we're we're going to get to that. Just hang on. <laughs> they have a very. Uh, Surely not. No, no. They have a very like. Gender bias view. Um, no, it's it's a gender bias industry. It's just the way to the way to be allowed to build it yourself. It, we'll get there. Insulated, 3,000 square feet. Okay. So, when I first heard about this, I was told by several sources I was going to build this bone structure house for $40 a square foot before I then went in and drywalled and finished it. Now, granted, drywalling, fixtures, a furnace, sinks, toilets, that stuff is going to add a substantial amount of money, but it's not going to make it, you know, it's not going to make it $200 a square foot. What I quickly realized is that in order to build it that cheap, you have to take their program, which costs $25,000, and you have to have X amount of experience as a contractor or a member of one of these construction trades, which is very limited to men with a lot of money. Right, so right off the top, I'm like, yeah, I want one of these houses, but I'm not going to do that. I wasn't going to build it myself anyway, let's be honest. But that, that was the way to get to that number. So average cost in Canada is 80 to 200 bucks a square foot, unless you're building something really high end. Um, bone structure is 250 bucks a square foot. If you don't pay 25 grand and take their course and prove that you have however many years of experience building. So it, it was a little disappointing. But even with the additional cost, I could start to see some benefits. And I could start to feel like, you know, uh, I could convince my wife of this because I, I really should do this. Like, it's better for our kids and it's better for the environment. And it's, it's just a better model for building a home. Um, so over time, I would see these benefits. Utilities, and I, I kind of went with like a 1,500 to 2,000 square foot house. It's going to be a little under a thousand bucks unless you're, you know, unless you're renting a tenants that have the AC on all summer long with the windows open, which were my tenants. Um, that'll go down to about 588 bucks. Uh, with a normal house that you might spend about 25 grand on every 15 to 20 years, furnace, roof, air conditioner, or whatever else is going on with the basement or the foundation or something happening, they're claiming this thing might need 15 grand in 50 years. So on top of that. It's a flexible design, which means you can actually pop out walls. You can un unattach them from the studs and move walls and interchange walls. It's like a Tetris house. There's no load-bearing walls. You can change rooms around as your family grows, as children leave to go away to school. It's, it's insane to be able to do that with a house. That's quite unusual. I'm sure even for those of you that don't own houses, you all live in houses, and you know you're not just moving walls around, <laughs> unless you're in, um, what was that movie where they, where they pushed the wall through to uh, Time Bandits? Oh, that was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, unless you're in Time Bandits, and I'm, and I'm dating myself now, but I was pretty young when that movie came out, where they could actually move the wall to get away from God and go back in time. Uh, you'd have to buy a bone structure house otherwise if you wanted to do that. Um, recycling. So. Not recycling stuff during your build, but they're using recycled materials and claiming that there is zero waste. Uh, the house is more durable, gives you peace of mind, and then quality can influence other neighbors in your area to maybe build other houses like that and increase the value of the neighborhood, your impact's going up, all kinds of good stuff could be happening here. But it would take me 150 years to justify this additional $175,000 that it would cost me. That's, I mean, I'm not showing you guys a lot of stuff that I did here when I analyzed this, but it would be another 175 grand right now, like at the moment, for me to, to get something that would take 150 years to provide me with that return. Okay, and that, that I know as business students, you know what that means. So it's, it's kind of a long time. 
but I want, you know, resale value, features and benefits, time is money, I want a happy wife, I want tax breaks for doing things that are more energy efficient, I'm still going to get that for that extra 175 grand. So here I'm finding a situation where maybe the want factors do line up with the should factors. But then I start thinking about the should factors and I'm like, yeah, it's sustainable. It can be reused. The house can be lived in more. It can be reused. It's better for future generations. It's better for health. They talk about the air quality in the home because it's better built. There's all, and it's just the footprint in general. It's not physically speaking because you're going to build your foundation where you're going to build your foundation. But because you're sucking less out of the planet, they say they have a more sustainable footprint. And here was a situation where I felt that these things were lining up where other times I haven't. So that's gonna to lead to our questions. So take a look at this. This is a toilet, okay? This is an example on a much smaller scale of what the bone structure house does to traditional building. It's sustainable, it's, it's compact, it's actually, it's very innovative. It's a, they, they have the sink set up as uh, the tank, which then helps operate the toilet. I'm not really sure where your legs go. I think you sit that way. Uh, but I thought that was pretty neat because I was just looking for photographs of the toilet with the two push buttons, which are generally more expensive than traditional toilets because they're more efficient. And it just, it drives me nuts that the governments of the world want us to be more sustainable and more efficient, but none of this stuff is cheaper. It's always more expensive. But with bone structure, I, I found an example that I felt like the, the should factors lined up because it was like, this is a pretty badass house, you know, I'm paying for it. but. Um, so this is one where the should versus the cost might not line up, where I should get something like this because it saves a ton of water, but, you know, it's funky and it's weird and it costs way too much money. Um, I should build a bone structure house because I won't fill up a dumpster like this 10 times when I'm building the house, but it's going to cost me 175 grand. i am really struggling with this. I need some kind of, as they called it in the article, it's a... Uh, a future opt-in, future buy-in. It's they're giving you, they're trying to get you to, to make a decision now for something that will then happen a little later on. The problem with the house is if I'm going to decide to buy it now, I got to build it now and I got to pay for it. And usually, when you're building something on vacant land, you need to have a lot of cash around because they won't mortgage vacant land. So you have to get the vacant land, buy it, get the foundation in, and once you get some wiring or something going on in there, then they'll probably mortgage it. But this is, it, that's going to make it that much harder for me not to create the dumpsters full of garbage. Um, we'll talk about that one more later. We already talked enough about that. <laughs> How about this? Open today. You know what that is? Jack? Yeah. What? What is it? Did anyone watch uh, an SNL, like there's this Chris Rock building? Yeah. It's called the Freedom Tower. Oh, oh. I'll be, I, should, I will never walk in that building tower. Oh, <laughs> no, I, no, but that's good. I think enough time has passed that we can laugh at that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the New World Trade Center. Uh, it took eight years to build. Approximately 1,500 people. I had a really hard time getting a, an accurate stat on that. 3.9 billion, it's the most expensive skyscraper ever built in North America. $1,150 per square foot, but it's the most sustainable building ever built. So the should factor really kicked in here, and it was way over budget. But here's the issue, it's, it always costs more money, and this is what the article kind of dealt with at times, is that it's, people want to do it, you know, but then, it, because they feel like they should do it, but then the want reverts back to, I want to save money. And that's what they really want. Um, this one's going to lead to the question. So this, this, this also, also took eight years to build. Okay? Okay. And, uh, and Maximus fought in there. Like this, this, uh, yeah, the treasures of Jerusalem. I couldn't get an accurate figure. Uh, but, uh, but the, the restoration of it alone was 19.3 uh, million, not 3.9 billion, but that's, you know, it's still pretty substantial. But it, it's really old, right? And it's still sitting there. So this, this brings up another issue, which is that if we would build, if we do spend the money to build better, 
it does last longer. I think it's just going back to the article again, if I'm not going to be around, what the hell do I care, right? And now, now I don't necessarily mean that. I'm just I'm presenting the argument to you guys. So uh, like the last one, it took eight years. Um, but it probably, factoring in inflation, cost a little bit more money. You know, and I know that whoever was leading Rome at the time was just whatever. They had, I don't know if money even mattered at that point, but the treasures of Jerusalem, I'm sure, are worth a lot of money. Um, so let's talk about this. And because you can hear it in my voice. I mean, I, I have this vacant piece of land. That I've got a lot of other issues with it. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's going to be a while before I'm even allowed to build on it because the Ministry of Natural Resources likes to control our private property. I don't know if you've read my paper yet or not. But, uh, you know, when I am, I'm going to struggle with this. I'm still going to struggle with it because I could probably make a house that looks like a bone structure house so I look cool, but it costs me way less money. And then sooner or later, I'm doing this to it, I'm doing that to it, sooner than I would be if I just built a bone structure house. So... What can we do to influence consumers to make these sustainable choices now? Instead of always saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do the efficiency thing later. For right now, my furnace is fine, even though it's a heaping piece of crap. I'll do it later, because I, I need the money right now. Well, alternatively, what can we do to make them more affordable? Why does, why does every